so yeah, I, I am an entrepreneur and I always kind of think there's only two images the British have of entrepreneurs and it's kind of like either Del Boy selling like watches out of his jacket or Alan Sugar and we all know what kind of entrepreneur he is. So um, I'm going to uh, talk about the future of merch. It's kind of a grandiose title, but I don't have the answers, but I kind of uh, hopefully give you guys something to think about. And, and I'm going to be coming at it from uh, the music industry because that's my background. Um, I used to be a touring DJ, DJed around the world, produced music, uh, had a record label that had a top 10 hit, and I think I DJed in here once. Uh, and that shows you how much fun I had in the music industry. I literally have no idea if that's true or not. So, um, so very quickly, I'm not really what you would call a gamer. I had a bit of a love affair with games for a while, uh, but actively have avoided them because I know that I would never get anything done if I had games. So I've actually just started playing Deus Ex uh, on my laptop, which shows you I've got a little bit of catching up to do. You know, I'm kind of uh, a little bit behind on things. So um, let's just quickly define what we mean by merch. For me, merch is anything that's physical. Um, the granddaddy of merch is T-shirts, but it could be mugs. Uh, Kiss, the rock band, uh, sell coffins. Uh, suits their demographic, I think. So, um, so basically anything that's kind of, for me, is physical or, or uh, non-digital. Um, and the benefits of it are that it's physical, it's tangible. We kind of are tribal beings, right? So, you know, when we were all 15, we wore our favorite band t-shirts. So we wanted to show how cool we were, even if it was the Spice Girls. Um, and it's a way of, uh, there's just something that can't be replicated about physical merch. And, you know, it can't be pirated, right? So that's commercially absolutely makes sense. It, there's, there's no physical way of it being uh, pirated yet, but we will come on to that. Um, so there's billions of dollars. As by the way, I'm kind of reading notes off my phone, um, partly because I spent most of the 90s in the music industry and my memory's gone. So um, there's billions of dollars spent on the music industry. Uh, on music merch every year. And although I'm going to be talking primarily about music merch, this will apply to the gaming sector in, 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 in many respects. Um, so, many people kind of think that merch is one of those things that is only like Coldplay or ACDC and whatever, but actually, um, I've seen bands who are basically paid like 50 quid to come and do gigs in places like this, you know, tiny little venues and where, you know, 17 people turn up, but have sold every single person in that room a T-shirt. They make more money from T-shirts than they do from what you think their job is. You think their job is making money from music, and it's not. They're making money from merch. I know a band of four guys that nobody in this room would have heard of. I'm almost certain of that. Um, but they make like enough to pay for lots of rent from t-shirts alone. Because they get no money from Spotify, they get like basically petrol money for doing their gigs, but they're cool enough that they sell a load of t-shirts. Um, so, when it comes to gaming, I think there is an opportunity. I know that some bigger labels, you know, as, as was restaurants just then, like Rovio at one point were making nearly half of their revenue from Angry Birds merch which is kind of crazy. Um, so, just to give you a bit of context about why I'm here, I'm, my company's called Ramp, um, and, ah, that's not a good sign. Oh, no. Now you're gonna see my kind of cheesy, uh... <laughs> it's a Dorset coastline, it's very nice. You know, it's like, uh, if anyone wants to talk to me about um, canoeing or, that wasn't canoe, was it, it was kayak. See, I don't know anything about it. That's my mate. Um, so we, we, we build platforms that, um, that enable people to create and sell merchandise online. So many of you have seen stuff like Cafe Press, Sazzle, Spreadshirt, where you basically upload a design and you can put it on a bunch of items and then sell it to your fans. We kind of do stuff like that, but we do it for specific sectors. And our route into this is the music industry. And we do that um, through our platform, Dizzy Jam, which is our kind of our flagship, for want of a better phrase. Um, and uh, again, you come along, you're a band, you're a terrible band, a brilliant band, whatever. You come along, you create a store, and you can be up and selling merch to your fans in 30 seconds flat. Okay, three minutes, three and a half minutes, uh, which is our record for seeing someone go through our site and, and sell some merch from, from start. And 
<laughs> what we do is we make it specific to the music industry. We give the bands who use us the tools, such as browse by genre or attach an MP3 to your T-shirt, we give them very, very uh, music industry specific tools. So I'll, I'll come back to that uh, in a bit, but we've got like 10, 12,000 acts who currently use our site. And we've done stuff for everyone from uh, Johnny Rotten uh, to Goldie Looking Chain, all the cool uh, kind of. Um, so, you know, we came into it because we had uh, the barrier to entry is capital. Like to go out and print like 50 t-shirts, uh, decent quality, is going to cost you a minimum of like a couple of hundred quid. And if you're a tiny little band and you don't have a couple of hundred quid, how do you start making money? So, uh, so we set this up, so it's a print on demand. You literally, the, the, the products do not exist until someone buys it. In which case, one of our print partners, anywhere in the world, we've got print partners all over the world, they'll print it, and they'll ship it direct to your fan, and you get the cash. Um, and this is what a standard store looks like. We've got um, embed codes and APIs, and you, know, you can make it look better than that. You can host it on your own store. We've got Facebook stores, all that kind of stuff. But one thing that we're, uh, we're keen to do more of uh, is to allow flexibility for end users or developers or other platforms to, uh, to use our system to sell merch. So um, this is Soundwave Mo, and it use, uh, has everyone heard of SoundCloud? Like a music streaming service where you can upload your music and stream it to whatever. So we mashed together our API and SoundCloud's API. Now SoundCloud's API spits out waveforms of any given track. Um, so you put your SoundCloud track URL in here, and what you get is something like that. So you literally just uh, create. So we're really starting to look at the way external data, images, scores, avatars can be used to create unique one-off personalized merch. Um, Everyone rock out to my uh, laptop speakers, yeah? So um, this is a terrible little promo video we did. Um, so, um, and SoundCloud was so taken with it. It was just a bit of an in-house hack for us, really, for a bit of a giggle. SoundCloud was so uh, taken with it, we got this kind of email from San Francisco going, we love this. Can we give you a, a spreadsheet full of like 100 top users and you send them their most played track with a... So yeah, we're like, okay, fine. Uh, and, you know, there's 100 people all over the world getting these mugs that nobody on the planet will ever get. They exist once, and once only for those people. Um, that's just for anybody who wants to have a look at our API documentation. All the cool kids in the room, you know, say, yeah. No, okay. Um, so... I think there's going to be a couple of different ways merch will go. We will always have like t-shirts like that, right? We're, I would bet that everybody in this room owns a t-shirt that's screen printed, and I bet that probably 50% of the people in the room here are wearing one tonight. But I think there's going to be a couple of angles, um, not just with t-shirts, but with mugs, with hoodies, with, uh, I've heard some people wear, oh, no. Uh, I've got like personalized baseball bats, I've heard personalized coffins, all that kind of stuff. So I think personalization is one thing, as we saw, but I think there's a, there's a possibility for some cool interactivity stuff, uh, certainly with augmented reality. So these guys, uh, this is called the AR guitar, which I only really recently realized is actually a bit of a pun on air guitar. Um, so this, uh, so the webcam on his laptop is seeing this little image here, and every time he breaks the thing, it plays a chord. So uh, there's a handful of tracks. It's kind of like a, a t-shirt version of, um, what's the game, Rock Band, not Rock Band, um, you know the one I'm talking about. Guitar Hero, thank you. Um, so yeah, so you know, I played it, and I did look as much of an idiot as, as Luke here did. And you know, you're kind of rocking out, and you're kind of trying to, you know, literally as you break. And that's really, really relatively simple process, but I can imagine uh, where you could have almost personalized games on your chest where people could only play games. Like with, that, um, with the Soundwave mugs, we thought about trying to create an app which would play the, play the track as you focus your phone on the mug. I mean, there's no way enough detail in the Soundwave, but, um, but you know, there, there are ways in which you can do really, really cool interactive 
stuff. Um, so that's the AR guitar. I'm going to show you now something which I think is kind of a, uh, it's broadly a terrible, terrible video um, f for a mediocre house track. Um, and uh, as with all mediocre house tracks, uh, his video is moderately sexist, so apologies. I was going to try and edit out the, the moderately sexist bits, which we will see. Um, but um, to create this video, I didn't create this video, it's just one. You log in with your Instagram account. Every single one of these has been generated from somebody's Instagram account, Instagram images. So all of these, and what happens is then automatically, if you look closely, when you look at it, you'll be able to see that's an image from an Instagram um, sexist interlude. Um, so, uh, so what you're actually seeing are, uh, are images that are taken from someone's Instagram account. So if you were to be able to, you can log in and what then in creates a, this is really distracting, sorry. Um, <laughs> these are the, all, the, all the press photos in the event will be like this guy going, hey, check out that. Um, yeah, so, and then these will all uploaded to YouTube. So you go on their YouTube channel, there's thousands of these automatic generated videos. Like I say, it's kind of a crap video, but it's really, really clever what they've done. So now, I'd be quite interested in what would have happened if they sold the record with personalized, uh, so you could have actually bought the record in your Instagram generated sleeve. Um, that would have been quite interesting for me. Let's get rid of that. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So uh, I will get around to editing that video up. It's quite a good example, but... Um, so yeah, imagine personalized album sleeves or CD sleeves. Um, how, long, how much time do I have? I'm sorry, I've got no idea of how long I've been waffling on. Sorry? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Oh, wow, I've got loads of time. Lucky you guys. Um, I won't need ten minutes, all right. Uh, so 3D printing is going to be an interesting one. And this is where piracy might come back into uh, physical merge. So has anyone heard of Shapeways? It's like basically a 3D, mar a 3D printing marketplace where you can download plans that you can then go off and print on your own printer. So uh, you can download anything from you know, table legs to you know, laptop covers to all, all sorts, whatever, whatever you, you can imagine. Um, and I imagine a future where you could go on and uh, our lovely host Dan could tell the world that he's a boy's own fan by getting a, a set of figurines of Boyzone with his face beautifully etched into the final character. <laughs> but, you know, for me, uh, I don't know this game. Uh, I just, that's just a random Google image. But imagine if that had your kind of your top score or, you know, uh, on these cards maybe came and they were a heat map generated of your route through uh, level or, you know, any data that comes out of a, out of a game could be applied. Any data, any imagery. Uh, so, 3D is, I think there's going to be an opportunity there, uh, because I don't think it's that far off where the majority of households are going to have a 3D printer. Um, I really don't. Uh, and, or at least have access, easy access to a 3D printer. There'll be one in every office or whatever, you know. Maybe not every house in the country has a photocopier, but, you know, we can all get hold of one, right? So, um... But also that, you know, it's not going to be too far off that people are going to be able to pirate that stuff because if you've got the plans for that stuff, you can charge like 25 99 to download it or to get a physical thing sent to you. But you could pirate the plans and uh, torrent or whatever. Um, I think that kind of brings me roughly to the end. So... I just wanted to say, really, that, that merch is this phenomenal opportunity. But, and we're, we're building a platform that is specific for the gaming sector. And we're working with Yuki, and we're really, really keen that it's driven by the people creating the games who understand their fans. Like I said, I'm playing Deus Ex. I shouldn't be allowed near this, right? <laughs> so, but you guys can inform that. Uh, and we're really keen that, um, that these, these, are, these are my details. So I'm going to be, I've got to drive back to Cardiff tonight. So I'm not going to be sticking around all night. But I will be here in the interval. 
Um, and I'd love to hear from anybody who has any ideas about the kind of data, the kind of... Um, uh, Adam's talk about um, music. I mean, you could get one of those sound waves on a mug. That would be amazing. Um, or you could, you know, you, so I didn't know that that kind of audio was generated in that kind of way until now. So I'm really, really keen that people like you tell us how this platform should operate. What are the, what are the, what's the functionality? What are the products you want to see? What is the data that we can use to create engaging, compelling products? that your users and fans will want to buy and therefore create money for you guys. Uh, and, and as Dan said at the beginning, sometimes, like us, this isn't necessarily about like, making loads of money. It's just being able to do what you love doing and get paid. And if we can help generate another revenue stream for you guys, um, then we'll be really, really happy to do that. Um, I think, let me check my notes. Oh yeah, there's one cool thing I forgot to say. Um, our platform allows us to generate products at scale. And what that means is we can generate stuff um, automatically. So one of our partners uh, uses our API to generate huge amounts of products. Whenever a new user joins their platform, they get 12 products created for them instantly. So we've got thousands and thousands and thousands of products. So you might find ways in which your users, when they sign up, when they create an avatar, when they create a something automatically creates products, shops, through us. Um, but otherwise, those are my details. Uh, drop me a line, say hello. Uh, if you wake up, bolt upright at 3 o'clock in the morning with a great idea, uh, don't phone me, but do tweet me. Thanks.